Today, one-inch sensor cameras may change your mind about needing big sensors and expensive cameras. All right, in that last video, we talked about small sensor cameras, one over 2.3 inch sensor cameras. Today, we're gonna to talk about one inch sensor cameras. These are bigger ones. And we're gonna compare the camcorders with bridge cameras with compact pocket cameras to see if there is a difference in these. Is there really a difference between this giant thing and one of these little things, which both have one inch sensors? And what is the difference if there is? Now the first thing you're gonna notice about one inch sensor cameras versus smaller sensor cameras like the ones we saw in the last video, and this goes for the bridge cameras too, the first thing you're gonna notice is these do not zoom as far as the other ones. Why? Well, because the smaller the sensor is, the further you can zoom because it crops in more on the lens. So let's just get right into it because I know you want to see the good stuff. Today we have three different setups. We have, of course, the zooming in on the bird to see how far it can zoom. Then we have a second one which zooms in on a closer bird to see how sharp it is. Then we go to the desert to get some really nice shots outdoors from quite a distance away to see how cool of a cinematic shot we can get with these. And then the third shot is an indoor interview style setup for YouTubers and things like that. So let's just get started. Speaking of YouTube, this is not full frame. This is not APS-C. This is not even micro four thirds. This is one inch. It's a pretty big sensor, but it's nowhere near as big as those other three, which is what everybody uses and thinks they need to use to have high quality on YouTube. You would think you need big sensors for blurry backgrounds. You don't. I might actually change your mind on how big your camera sensor really needs to be. I'm not gonna include the ZV-1. I found the RX100 quality to be better, even though it looks like the same camera, it's not. Not. You might be interested in seeing a video comparing the Canon XF605 to a little RX100. You'd be quite amazed on that one. I know they are designed for different uses, but check out that video. It's really interesting. It might actually blow your mind. I'm not going to count the Insta360 because that's just a wide angle lens. I'm not going to show a Nikon 1. It just doesn't have any of the features that the Sony or the Panasonics have. All right, so let's start right away with the bridge cameras because this is kind of what sparked this whole thing. They're in between the really big and the really small, and these are basically giant zoom lenses with a camera body attached. These are the two big contenders. I know there's other ones with Fuji and stuff like that, but the Sony RX10 Mark IV, this is the Cadillac of bridge one inch cameras versus the Lumix FZ2500, both one inch sensors. The Sony costs twice as much. It's like $1,700, that's crazy. This one is half the price, like $900. Is there really a difference? Let's find out. Let's start with the Lumix FZ2500. Almost all these cameras have 20 megapixel 4K one inch sensors. This has a 20 times zoom, 24 to 480, f2.8 to 4.5. Mic input, it can shoot Cine D profile for video, which is great. It has a touch screen, which flips out, so you can do vlogging with it, which is great. It has built-in NDs, which everybody wants. They're actually on the lens. This is really cool. It has the built-in NDs on the lens and three function buttons on the side here too, which is really cool. So let's have a look at what that looks like. It's half the cost of the Sony RX10, but it's still very good. It has better image quality than the little Panasonic ZS200 pocket camera, but it's bigger, heavier, and clunkier as a camera. You can zoom a lot with this thing, so it's obviously great for wildlife and birds, but the image quality is good enough to use for other things too, both in picture taking and the video world. Look at this, really nice. Look at that compression. It's really easy to work this camera, just like all Panasonic cameras, and I think the image looks really friendly, too. I accidentally had the white balance set to shade, so everything's got this golden color. So if you ever want to have that sunset magic hour look in the middle of the day, just set your white balance to shade. Here's your free tip of the day. This definitely has kind of a cinematic look to it. Whoa! Look at that! <laughs> wow! Colors look great, both indoors and outdoors. Really nice. Then we have the Sony RX10 Mark IV. This is the one that everybody talks about because, well, it's better be g talked about because it's so damn expensive. $1,700, again, 20 megapixel 4K, one inch sensor like the rest of these cameras. 25 times zoom, 24 to 600, so it zooms further than the Lumix a little bit, f2.4 to four. In 1080, it can do up to 1,000 frames per second, just like the RX100. That's pretty amazing. It has a mic input, a hot shoe, and shockingly, this giant beast this is one of the downsides of this thing. Unbelievable. It uses one of the little tiny original Sony batteries that lasts like 10 minutes or <laughs> five minutes if you're using video. I'm amazed this giant monster is using this tiny little battery. Well, that shows that it's been around for a while. This is not a new camera. 
that's the weakest part of this. The most amazing thing about this camera is the viewfinder. The viewfinder is, it'll take your breath away when you look through this camera. It's just amazing. It has one of the smoothest zooms of any bridge camera, almost as smooth as the camcorder. This is as far as it goes with optical, and with clear image, it goes this far. That's a good reach. All right, bird on car zoom. Look how smooth that zoom is. Wait, there's more. Look at that. This is obviously great for birds and wildlife, but it's good for so much more. I can see why people love this camera so much. It's just so beautiful. I can't stop looking at it. Being able to get shots like this with an easy to use camera makes the size and weight seem worthwhile. I mean, it's really no bigger than a full frame camera with a lens on it. Wow, does it ever look great indoors. Look at this, wow, really nice. Has a nice clean image, nice colors, and an amazing viewfinder. It's kind of the opposite of other cameras in that it's great indoors, but has a little bit less dynamic range outdoors than the RX100 Mark VII has, which came out a year later. But the RX10 has a much better zoom than any RX100. But then again, this is not a pocket camera. What a joy this camera is to use. Looking through the viewfinder is a thrill unto itself. It's one of the best viewfinders I've ever looked through. Using the camera is fun, and I love the footage it gives you. All right, so let's get into the camcorders now. How do they compare with the bridge cameras? Bridge cameras are big, giant zoom lenses with a camera attached. Well, so are the camcorders, except these are bigger. Why is that? Well, camcorders are made to run all day without overheating and stuff like that. We already talked about all this. Plus they have XLR inputs and buttons everywhere and they're more professionally set up for professional type people. And it's more impressive when you're being paid at a gig to have a big giant thing. It just looks more expensive and you get paid more for it. Anyway, so let's start with this one here. This one is actually, a, uh, nobody's probably ever heard of this thing because it's, it's been out for a while, but this is a really good bang for your buck. This is the Panasonic AG UX90. This is a UHD 4K professional camcorder, came out in 2016. You can get these used now for between 800 to 1,000 or 1,300 dollars. These are a good deal, really, really good deal if you're looking for something like this. One inch sensor, nine megapixel UHD, 18 megapixel if you're doing 1080. It has ND filters, five axis stabilization, a 35 to 531 lens, that's a 15 times zoom, f2.8 to 4.5, all kinds of settings where you can obviously adjust pretty much anything you want. You can set the detail levels, how the soft the skin tones are, the chroma, the black levels, the gamma, the knee, and on and on and on. Where's the, the flip out screen? Well, you pull this out, and you turn it and here's your screen and then when you're done you pull it that way and you tuck it in that's really cool of course it has xlr inputs and stuff like that so let's see the footage one thing these pro camcorders have is an ultra smooth zoom super smooth that's as far as it goes before we zoom in look at the quality of the shot so clean so slick looking and the zoom is terminator smooth wow this is as far as it zooms but it's a nice clean image let's go indoors Wow, nice. And look how slow you can zoom with this camera. I was amazed and really surprised at the quality of this camera because it came out in 2016. Really nice. It has a nice professional look to it. Colors look great both indoors and outdoors. I like the look a lot more than the cold Sony AX700 or Z90V. Under the right conditions, you can get some really nice stuff from this camera that you can get used for now between $800 to like $1,200 if you look around. I like this one a lot more than the $4,000 Canon XF605 or the $7,000 XF705. I love the look of the video out of this thing so much more. All right, then we have the Canon G60. This came out in 2019 and almost immediately they stopped making them for some mysterious reason. The G 70 which I showed you in the last video which has a much smaller sensor at 1 over 2.3 came out three years later at the end of 2022 and again it has a smaller sensor so why did they stop making this one almost immediately and replace it with something with a smaller sensor well technology advanced quite a bit since then the other one has newer features this one is actually lacking a lot of features you cannot customize the picture profile in this like I did in the G70 you just have standard neutral and wide DR that's it you can't do any custom stuff this doesn't have peaking it doesn't have zebras, which blows my mind, but it does have ND filters. So is the new G70 with a much smaller sensor as good as the G60 with the one inch sensor? Here they are side by side. The quality isn't that much different, and I don't know, I kind of like the colors on the G70. Now here we are zooming in. If you stay within the optical zoom range, it can look quite good. 
If you use just a little bit of digital, it's still okay like this. Colors are good, especially outdoors. Indoors can be a little trickier. Skin tones seem to be a little on the red side, and there's not too much you can do to correct it without messing up the overall image. Because of the one inch sensor, you get a bit more background blur, but it's not mind blowing. But honestly, even though the newer G70 has a considerably smaller one over 2.3 inch sensor, I think it has some advantages over the G60. The G60 gives you blurrier backgrounds and a little less grain, but the G70 is smaller, lighter, cheaper, newer, has newer technology, more picture profiles and features and a longer zoom. Personally, I like smaller and more lightweight stuff, so I like to lean a little more towards the G70, but both are good. All right, then we have the Sony one inch camcorder. It comes in three different flavors. We have the AX100, which is the basic model. You can get that really cheap for like $1,000 used. There's also the AX700 and the Z90V, which is the same camera. They just have a few more features. Because of Sony, this can shoot up to 1,000 frames per second. Of course, it has ND filters on the back right next to the manual auto switch. The handle is removable if you don't want to use that with the XLRs. And here's what it looks like. Super smooth zoom. This is as far as the optical zoom goes. And with digital, you can go a little further, but of course, only to a degree. Color's okay with the image, but it's nothing like the RX100 in my opinion. The benefit of this being a camcorder is you can run it all day without overheating. You don't get this camera for the wow looks. You get it for dependable, non-stop shooting. The footage is kind of clinical. It has kind of a camcorder look. I like the RX10 color so much more than this camera. But the one thing this AX700 has that no other camera has other than the RX100 is the moment you turn it on, it locks onto your eyes and it has the best autofocus it follows you around the autofocus instantly locks onto your face all right so that was our camcorders you already saw the bridge cameras let's get on to the fun stuff the little tiny pocket cameras are these any good how do these compare to these bigger more impressive looking cameras let's just get right into it let's start with the Lumix ZS 200D I love this camera it has a 24 to 360 zoom lens this is a pocket camera it fits in your pocket $700 20 megapixel 4k 1 inch sensor just like the rest of these things 15 time zoom 3.3 to 6.4 so no blurry backgrounds with this thing if you're shooting indoors but this camera is really sharp it does not have a flip out screen but it does have a viewfinder this is really cool i love cameras with viewfinders you cannot see yourself if you're vlogging this is more for somebody who's behind the camera instead of in front of the camera this lens is really sharp even when you're zoomed all the way impressively sharp lens no mic input but it it has this is it's amazing what you can get with things so here's the footage you can get with it zoom is obviously not as smooth but pocket cameras are about the destination not the journey this is as far as it goes with an eye zoom and this is digital all right bird on car zoom not bad okay let's get to the good stuff remember this is a little pocket camera nice background separation when outdoors some decent background blur Skin tones are not super rich, but they're friendly and pleasant. This generation of Panasonic cameras have skin tones that seem to be mainly in the yellows and lacking some of the reds, but it still looks good. Look at what you can get with a consumer pocket camera. I don't know, I still think it's better than a cell phone. Nice pleasant colors. Don't expect any blurry background indoors, but you still get some telephoto compression. But outdoors, you can get some background blur. Anyway, I think it's pleasantly surprising what kind of stuff you can get with this little pocket camera. Okay, then we have the Canon G5X Mark II. This one tries really hard to be like the Sony RX100. It has a viewfinder that pops up, uh, which you then have to pull out, unlike the RX100, which just pops out immediately on its own. It has a flip up screen. It's about the same size as, well actually it's a little bigger than an RX100 and a little heavier than an RX100. So is it better because it's bigger and heavier? <laughs> it's $800, the RX100 is $1300, so this is cheaper. It doesn't zoom that much. It's a 24 to 100, it's only a four time zoom, but it's f1.8 to 2.8. My first impression when I got this thing was I love it. I love the way it feels, I love the build. It's a pocket camera with a viewfinder, a flip up screen, it has an ND filter, it has a mic jack has great stabilization <sighs> then i saw the footage video quality is okay but like most canon cameras you need to shoot 4k because 1080 is pretty much unusable autofocus is not spectacular outdoors skin colors are good but can be a little bit too heavy in the reds even when i try to adjust for it this camera has a lot of potential but falls short in some really important areas like 
uh, staying in focus. All right, so that's the G5X Mark II. Kind of a disappointment. Let's move on to the Lumix LX10. This also is a direct competitor to the RX100. It does not have a pop-up viewfinder. It has a flip-up screen now so you can vlog with it. It's almost exactly the same size and weight as an RX100, but it's half the price. This is only $600. This also doesn't zoom very far. It's only 24 to 72, which is just not very far. But what makes this camera special is you see this dial? It goes to f1.4 and you can manually set it. So it's, this is a 1.4 to f2.8 lens. It does not have a mic input, but I never use a microphone directly in a camera anyway. All my videos are shot with a, my, my audio recorded separately. It's just better quality. I can have the camera a mile away and it won't matter. It doesn't zoom very much. <laughs> That's as far as it goes. But again, Panasonic chose image sharpness over zoom range with this one. Because of the f1.4 lens, this camera can give you a really special look. Now the color is better on the RX100, but the LX10 has a look that no other camera has. It has this really cool 3D effect. I love the special look the LX10 gives you. And remember, this is a little pocket camera. All right, and now we get to the famous Sony RX100 Mark 7. It has a pop-up viewfinder which automatically expands so you're ready to go immediately. Amazing quality viewfinder. Even though it's tiny, wait till you look through this thing. You'll be amazed how great this viewfinder is. It has a flip-up screen so you can vlog, has a mic input, has everything you'd ever want. 20 megapixel 4K 1 inch stack sensor. Stack sensors are better. You get improved image quality, higher resolution, faster frame rates, better low light sensitivity, better object recognition and tracking, less rolling shutter, eight times optical zoom, 24 to 200, F2 2.8 to 4.5, 960 frames per second. It's small, but it's awesome. This viewfinder, by the way, has four times the resolution of the HX99, which I showed you in the last video, which looks the same as this, but it's a little bit smaller, a little lighter, half the price, but it's only a one over 2.3 inch sensor. This thing blows it away. I mean, if you want the best quality period of a camera that you can put in your pocket, this is the Ferrari of pocket cameras. Wow, look at that. The image just jumps off the screen. Look at that compression. $1,300 and it's worth every penny. Even though it has S-Log 2 and 3 and HLG, you don't need logs and LUTs with this camera. This is just basic standard out of the box color and it's shockingly perfect. You don't have to change anything. No color grading, just push record and you're done. Wow. This is my most favorite and most used camera of any camera I have, and I have hundreds. Most of my YouTube videos are made with this camera, and most of it is only 1080. It's that good. I love it. I have five of them now. And now for the big surprise. This is the biggest, I mean smallest, I mean biggest surprise of the whole bunch. This is the world's smallest interchangeable lens camera with a 1 inch 20 megapixel sensor. Look at that. You can actually change the lens on this thing. This is no bigger than a deck of cards, and this will blow your mind. It's the Samsung NX Mini. Are you ready? Here we go. Wow, just look at this. This little camera just blows my mind. Wow, look at this footage. And this is only 1080. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> How do you even describe this? And it's from something the size of a deck of cards. Wow, <laughs> wow, look at this. This is the smallest, most fun to use camera I have. Look at this little tiny 17 millimeter lens. This shot right here was taken with this little lens. This is right out of the camera. Nothing's been touched up. It has this really cool 3D look to it. You can literally fit this thing in your pocket. If I had a pocket, I'd show you. Because you can change the lens, you can use an adapter and stick any lens you want on here, like this big full-size 85 millimeter NX lens. Here's a shot taken with that. Now you can get as blurry of a background as you'd ever want with a one inch sensor that fits in your pocket. You can even stick full-size Canon EF lenses on here, like the 51.2. You can go crazy with bokeh and blurry backgrounds with this little gem. Of course, they don't make it anymore. You have to find them used on eBay or something, you do not ever sell one of these if you have one, because you're gonna regret it. All right, now we get to the uh, <clears throat> the Pocket 3. Gotta do this or I'm gonna get reamed for not showing the one inch Pocket 3. Here it is. So what do the shots look like with this thing? The footage has a really nice look, but it's just a fixed wide angle lens with no zoom. So this is all you're gonna get. We'd have to walk right up to the person to get the same shot. Of course, walking is not an issue since this is made for walking because it has great stabilization. 
And when you get to about the same framing as the other cameras, you have wide angle lens distortion and the person looks kind of funny like you're looking through the peephole of a hotel door to see who's on the other side. All right, let's go indoors with this thing. Now, this is a great small pocket camera. The two things this has going for it, it, well, three things, one inch sensor, obviously. The other two things that are really strong about this is, of course, the stabilization for when you're walking. But what I think this is the best camera for, for me, is you just put it on a tripod and then it follows you, it face tracks you. So you can walk around the room or out in nature or whatever and it follows you. For something in your pocket that follows you with a one inch sensor and it fits in your pocket, that's what this thing, in my opinion, shines for. So there's a purpose for everything. So my favorite ones of this video in the order that I like them is number one, the Sony RX100 Mark VII. Surprise, surprise. Number two, the Sony RX10 Mark IV. I love this camera. Number three, the Samsung NX Mini. What a sheer joy this thing is to use. Number four, the Lumix FC 2500. Big and clunky, but it's easy and fun to use and gives you good quality stuff. And the runner-ups are a tie between the Lumix LX10 and the ZS200. All of these give you great quality stuff. And let's give a warm thank you to our beautiful model, Kara, for helping make all this possible and giving our eyes a treat. There you go. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, have fun with life.